Got a question? Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. This is Home Show Radio live on Facebook and YouTube. Your questions, Tom's answers. Now here's Tom Tynan and Charlie Mosier. What could possibly go wrong with those two knuckleheads on your computer? Good morning. I'm Charlie Mosier, and that over there is Tom Tynan. So you're saying nobody's ever seen us before? What could go wrong? <laughs> That's true. It's true. It's fine. All right. <laughs> All right. What we're here to do is answer the questions you send us at homeshowradio.com using that Ask Tom form. We appreciate it. But, you know, because you're here and because we're live through the magic of Mark Zuckerberg's technology here, you are able to participate. You can go ahead and send your questions to us using the comment section below on Facebook or over on YouTube. Um, thanks to the guys at YouTube, but you just put your questions in there and it'll come up here. Even if you just want to say hi, it'd be great to see you and, and know that know that you're out there and know that you're part of the Gala broadcast here at uh, homeshowradio.com. The last of its kind, by the way, because next week we're not going to be here anymore. Whoa! We <laughs> no more paycheck. No, 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 no. We're moving. We're going to be I on need in the my afternoon. Stimulus check. No, Tom. Tom, we're going to let you sleep in. And uh, we're going to move the show uh, to the afternoons, and we'll talk. We'll talk more about that before we wrap up later today. But there, there is. We are going to be joined not only by, um, not only be answering all the questions you sent us. My notes have fallen terribly behind here. Okay, uh, but we're also going to be joined by uh, one of our home show pros, uh, John Ludwig, who's sitting back luxuriating go. in his backyard right there. He'll be joining us here in a few minutes. And before we get to your questions, though, Tom. I don't know about if you've seen the little moths in your yard, but we've seen them in Charlie, ours. about three about three years. Right now, I, I'm clean, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. Three years ago, I had those sod webworms. In fact, <laughs> we did a video about it way back then, and I had those moths everywhere, and it destroyed my yard. It took two years, and I, I'm really proud of my gardening in my yard. Two mm -hmm. years to get my yard back. Right now, when I when I left yesterday, my house to come to Brownsville, it looked gorgeous. And then you guys started telling me about sod webworms. I almost turned around and went back and wanted to walk through my yard to make sure the moths weren't there. And they they it's act terrible. fast. So so well, here's what we did. We reached out to our buddy Danny at, at uh, Home Show Garden Pros, and we asked him to put together a little video and kind of explain what they cause and what you can do and some steps you can do to take care of them because you want to act fast. And Danny will explain it to you right now. Sod webworms are tiny worms that live in your grass. Usually you always, in the summer months, have an infestation of some kind, but some years it's much worse than others. Signs you might have them might include thinning of the grass, dying in patches, but especially little white moths that fly up from your grass when you walk around, especially in evenings. If you do have those moths, it means you have the caterpillars, it also means you have the eggs. One of the dangers of sod webworms is they're multi-generational, so you'll have the living caterpillar infestation as well as an egg population all in the grass at the same time. It's very important to treat them. If you don't treat them and you have a kind of big infestation, you could lose parts of your whole lawn, if not your whole lawn altogether. There are three ways to treat sod webworms. My kind of go-to for a lot of insect problems is molasses. And when it comes to molasses, the big thing is don't spray in the middle of the day. So and if it rains, you got to reapply. But every two weeks until you don't see any more moths, it's going to be good for the soil. Follow the label directions for foliar spray. You are spraying the leaves of your grass mostly, so keep that in mind. And you know, I always go a little bit heavy with it. The best way to do it is a hose-in sprayer. So that's going to be the easiest way to apply liquid molasses. Second solution to sod webworms is BT. So BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a bacteria that's naturally found in soils and it kills the caterpillars from the inside out, actually decomposes them from the inside. You don't want to do too heavy of a spray too often because it could kill other caterpillars. Some of those are beneficial. So using it once, max twice, super max three times. And when it comes to the label, just follow the directions, mix it in water, get it in your hose and sprayer. Again, spraying your lawn is a lot of stuff, so be, make sure you've got enough BT. My favorite solution is actually mixing the two, mixing molasses and BT together and when you do that, you just want to keep the rates on the label. You don't have to change anything to make a super mix, but it lasts longer. It, it's more effective in killing the caterpillars, and it's still good for the soil. So it's kind of got those three things that are really helpful in it. For sure, a hose-in sprayer is the way to get it out there. And with this, you can do two or three 
um, applications and you'll solve your webworm problems. If you are seeing those little white moths, take action because they can move really quickly to destroy your space. The things that we listed work really well, but remember, building resilience to the soil is the number one thing you can do to protect your lawn. So keep that in mind as you're doing what you're doing. But again, act quickly if you have the moth. Go? Yes. You're oh, on okay. Well, <laughs> nobody nobody <laughs> gave me the finger. See, I'll, usually I'll you go, you a finger. you're on. All right, Tom. Okay. Hang, hang on a second. Ready? <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> and remember, Danny's with us every Saturday from seven to nine. He he's my he's my front guy, my startup guy. What do you call him? The warm up act, I guess he's you would say. Back. That's and right. then he gets to go home, and I have to work for the rest of the day. So it works out pretty well. But the guy knows his stuff. I've grown very fond of him, and he is my go to guy for all of my gardening stuff. So listen to him on Sports Radio six ten every Saturday from seven till nine. Yeah, he's joined by um, the seven great gardens, independently owned garden centers here in Houston that come in and give great advice and all that. So that's that's that show. Okay, so let's get to it. It's time for us to finally get to the questions. Let's do that here. I hope that was helpful for you on the solid webworms. We're going to post it up at homeshowradio.com later today in case you missed some or all of it or you want to take notes. Uh, you'll be able to watch that video. Okay, let's get to the questions here. First one to us, Tom, comes from William in Laporte. He says, I'm retiling the shower wall. I put up hardy board, you know, the, the hardy backer. He said, but I put mm -hmm. the smooth side out. Now I'm reading the rough side out is how it should be used. Does it really matter? Well, they do the rough side. So the tile and the thin set and or the mastic, if you're using that, all combine together. So in a way it does. If you were using a thin set with the tile, I think it matters more. If you're using a mastic, which is a pre-mixed uh, white kind of glue, uh, and, and you're putting that on the wall, I think you could get away a lot easier with that and you don't have to worry about it. So it has to do with the adhesive. But with the thin set, it does matter that it do, it has to have something to grab onto. So I'm not sure his, his method of, of putting the tile up, but if it's a mastic, I wouldn't worry about it. If at this point, would you maybe rough it up a little or something to help it stick to it? Or, or would you pull it off and turn it around and put it back on? The reason I wouldn't rough it up is you destroy the waterproofness of it, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and if you start roughing it up, then it's just going to become real porous. And I hate to tell them this, and this is why you have to prepare before you start using materials. And that's just a little, uh, you know, information for anybody doing anything but I would probably turn it around, but it depends. If he's using a small tile with a mastic, I don't think it's gonna matter. Right, fair enough. Next question comes from Dave in Spring. He says, our house is built in the early eighties. We have brick around the whole first floor of the exterior. We have quite a few long cracks that are running vertically through the house. How can you tell when you just need some tuck point repair or when uh, the whole facade should be replaced, Tom? Well, I don't think the whole facade ever needs to be replaced. If you're getting a lot of cracking, then you have to call like Due West Foundation Repair because your foundation is moving. A lot of people don't realize that it's not a cracked foundation. It's a foundation that has excessive movement. That could be from trees, from drainage, from underground plumbing problems. If it's an older home, 80s it is. It could be from uh, just poor design. There's a lot of different things that cause it. And so once you stabilize the foundation, then it is a matter of just repointing the brick and everything is fine uh, but sometimes uh, being as old as that it probably has a little excessive movement and that's what's showing the signs of foundation uh, repair so i would call someone like do us out first it's free you don't have to sign anything you don't have to do anything just have them give you an evaluation if it's movement if it's not movement then you can have just a, a repair company come out and repair the brick but you're not going to take it all off there's no reason for that Right. And when Dues comes out, <clears throat> it may turn out that what you need is foundation watering and they can help you with that. Or yeah. maybe it could have been a root barrier problem where you have a root that's that's kind of Absolutely. sucking under the foundation. That's the nice thing about them is I think I think Kenny told me one time that less than half the time they go out, it actually leads to foundation repair because they can usually find that's ways to, to save people. All right. Third question for you, Tom, comes from Huntington Woods, Michigan. He says he's watching, and, and uh, John writes, 
I was watched your video about chirping sounds in plumbing that you attributed to a toilet filler valve. We have a chirping, but it only appear, happens when we run the washing machine and it calls for water or as it shuts the water off. I can hear it from the pipes on the main floor. The laundry is on the second and it only started recently, Tom, but he says it's getting worse. If it w happens when the water shuts off, that means the, you're, you're getting a little bit what we call a water hammer. It's probably starting slowly. I don't know if anybody has done any work on the house and turned the water off, turned the water back on, replaced a, a, some washers in a, in a faucet or something. But usually that's a water hammer. So the fix for that, if you want to at least try it to see if that's what it is, is to turn the water off to the house, drain all the pipes the best you can, which means just open everything up and let the water drain out. Now, here's the trick. Before you turn the water back on, you need to close all the valves. So when you turn the water on, it pressurizes with air and water as the water moves through. And then as you turn the valves on in different areas, it'll spit some air. It's, it's pretty common. But your risers, there's 18 inch risers in the wall and they will fill with air. And that's what they're supposed to do because they're actually shock absorbers. And so it can be as simple as that fix. And usually a water hammer will get worse and worse with time until you think the whole house is gonna come down on you. So I have a feeling that's simple. It's not a, a major problem. It's annoying right now, but it's something you probably should address. I'm so glad that we had a water question to finish our third question here this morning. It's almost like we designed it that way because it's time to welcome our guest to the program, one of our, <laughs> nice. home, one of our home show pros. We segue Let's hear it for Charlie. He decided Yay! to tell. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, our, our next pro is uh, our home show pro for water. Of course, that's Aquatex. Right? You'll find him on our homepage, by the way, all our pros. But if you click on the Aquatex page, like any other pro, it opens up their page where you can contact them and link them. And there's a little video there from Tom. But we welcome this morning, we welcome John Ludwig to the broadcast this morning. Good morning, John. How are you this morning? Good morning. Very well. Hi, John. We've got well, some chirping going on out here. Well, it's the, <laughs> it's the cicadas are uh, our fourth guest on the show today. <laughs> Indeed, like that. <laughs> it's great. It's great to have you here. Now, now, Aquatex has been with us since. I mean, I mean, for as long as we've been on six ten longer, because I think you started when we were on the old station, and uh, right. been, with, been with us a very okay. long time. And I know that Tom's a big believer in in your product. Yes. I miss it when I'm not around it. It's like my best friend. <laughs> I agree with you. I, I'm miserable with without that nice soft shower. Ah, yeah, I don't want to go on vacation anymore. Not just for that, but for other reasons too. Yeah, down you're in Brownsville, right? I am in Brownsville, Texas, right now, where I work for Texas Southmost College. Yes. What's that, John? Do you see the buildup on showers and such? Oh yeah. You, you, I'm fighting it constantly. We are down here, and the water is, is not the greatest quality down here. But what I find the most here, as opposed to the buildup in other places, is my skin dries out really, really fast. More so than in other places I've been where you do get the buildup, but your skin isn't as effective as much. So I have to use a lot of cream, yes. <laughs> which I don't like. Yes. <sighs> How's that, Charlie? We're getting lots of information here on the program. I <laughs> yes. think that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm yeah, sensitive. if John, John, if Tom could find a way to take a K5 even as a check bag, um, he'd probably like to do <laughs> <Yes>. that. <laughs> so, I would. All right, let's get to the questions, John. We have uh, several questions we've gotten from our Ask Tom form for you. And uh, okay. for the, uh, the first one we have comes from Sue over in Acres Homes. She says, I need an under kitchen sink water filter system. And she wants to know uh, what, what are the thoughts on those ones you buy off the shelf at uh, the big box stores or maybe even Amazon? What do you say to those, John? I would say it's okay if you know what you're getting into. Example would be uh, RO systems work off of TDS, temperature and pressure, and of course they need to know the hardness of the water. And if any of those are out of whack, you're not gonna get production or you're not gonna get what you're hoping to get. So she needs to be able to ask the right questions um, and, and be able to answer the questions what her pr pressure is and what her TDS is and, and uh, the temperature of the water. John, TDS, what is it? TDS is total dissolved solids. Yeah, we get. Uh, we, you, it's like in the army or something, or in a college 
We're always talking about RTUs with the ASOs and OCPs, and okay. people have no idea what we're talking about. So I, I just want to make sure people realize total uh, dissolved solid solutus. Correct. There's certain water treat, uh, testing that should go on. Like most ROs aren't going to handle over 10 grain water. Uh -huh. And then they point the problem at the RO system saying it never worked. Well, it might have been put on water that it couldn't work on. Do you find that much in Houston? Not so much in Houston. I'll bet you it's happening down where you are. That could be. We're, we're joined by and our by our fourth guest, by the way. They've decided to mow the lawn at the post office next door, in case you can't hear the mower. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's, every Let week them it's mow. Something. They're getting the sod webworms. <laughs> every week it's something. Okay, next question for you, John, comes from uh, Patrick in Walnut Bend. He says, looking to replace the existing 15-year reverse osmosis our under sink water filter. Should I stick with RO or are carbon alternatives acceptable? Stick with RO system. It's still the be best technology out there. Um, if, if you, it depends on what he's trying to remove. If it's just chlorine and he doesn't have any issues, carbon filter is great. Um, if you're trying to get rid of the PFOAs and the PFO, I'm doing it again, but these are the like the Teflon, the forever chemicals that are in the uh, in the environment, uh, carbon filtration is just not going to take it out where reverse osmosis is designed to do that. John, on, on television, you see these uh, commercials of a pitcher type product, right? You just pour it in the pitcher. One has one filter, one has five filters. Then they stick a little stick in there to see what the uh, total dissolved solids really are. And it says one says zero, the other says 100. Do you, th is it the, 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 the water that they're testing that could be not so bad as opposed to really bad water or is it there are people are under the impression it's going to have it's going to take care of all the water out there and i think it's important that we tell them that it probably has it's kind of a tricky thing with the water they're using they're they're probably running it through anion exchange resin and anion's going to take it all the tds out the total dissolved solids out and once that's taking place uh you have to regenerate any ion exchange system, even the cation exchange or the anion exchange systems. So they run out fairly quick if you're trying to remove all of the anions from the water also, okay. including the salt. I got another question. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, they're trying to sell four filters on a weekly basis, so you have to <laughs> constantly buy the filter, buy the filter, buy the filter. That, that, the higher the TDS, the more that's going to take place, right. yes. Okay, I got one more for you, John. Come comes from uh, Jack in Atascacita. He wants to know, what are your thoughts on water softeners that work without using salt? Well, that's kind of an oxymoron because if you uh, are wanting softened water, you have to take the hardness out of the water. And if you're leaving the hardness in the water, you don't have soft or softened water. Um, you can go through the whole hydrological cycle when it when it uh, when it evaporates, it goes up and it comes down. It's coming down soft, and then it's picking up everything it comes in contact with. Uh, there's some room for uh, our manufacturer makes saltless water softening systems, but they they coach us very much on do not call this a softening system because it's not. The rock is still in the water, so uh, it's it's for reducing the scaling attributes of hard water but it's not removing the hardness from the water so it has its negative sides too like it's if you heat it up in a water heater it's going to still fall out and fill up in it or if you're going through one of those tankless ones it's just going to kind of change that dissolved rock into a rock and send it on its way so kind of make sure that you know what you're looking for and then they have a lot of different types of saltless water softening systems some of them have this like coil of thin wire wrapped around around it and it says it shoots a, a current into the water and changes the structure it's hocus pocus to me but and i've seen some people buy them and really not happy so yeah you know, just have have the customers look uh, and and try to educate themselves it's pretty hard uh to do that in, in the water industry john what i've known about it is some of those what we call hocus well you said hocus pocus for a, a house isn't going to work because once it goes through and it sits a minute, it goes right back to its original state. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I've noticed that maybe, and this is where people use it for sales, 
a lot of like cooling towers and stuff that are constantly circulating, constantly circulating, never stop. They actually, I think, get some results from those, but it's not for a household use because we start and stop and start and stop and we're not constantly moving. Am I, am I uh, on board with that? Or am I close to what that ha what's happening? Pretty much the, uh, the one that Connecticut makes uh, if we put it in, it's good for about six months and needs to be recharged. So it's not like you put it in and just forget about it. And and uh, it's either recharged or replaced. Uh, and that that happens to be quite often if it's a couple times a year, more in the family, maybe more often. So we just stick with removing it uh, through typical means of uh, typical softening system with, uh, with the salt. The... Um thing about water softener that I've experienced myself, John, because I've had one, not had one, and now after all this, I want to get one. So I'm going to have Sandy call you later today and we'll, we'll get the wheels rolling. You and I have talked about it before, but it's got one of those things we set aside and forgot about. So let's go ahead and get that gun because um, I want... I love want, to have you. I want, I want that silky, smooth to Tom Tynan skin. I know. Makes me look yeah, good. I, I get it I'm 108 time. years old. Look at me. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. No. We get it all the time. We're saying I don't want that slimy skim, and I say I, no, I, ours I, don't do the slime. No, skims. yours does not do that. I will attest to that. It does not do that. What is it that ours does that? that silky feel. What is it that with some water softeners you get that kind of slimy feeling, John? Because that, that, that's really the question I've got is there are the old system I used to have came from a, another company that used a meter instead of the gauge like your, yours uses like a, um, a, a gear in there, I guess, that determines how much salt is put in there. The other one used a timer. So whether we're running water or not, it was regenerating and all that. I think that's a real competitive difference. Is that what makes a difference in, in how your skin feels? Uh, the skin's going to feel, well, it's funny, some people feel it and some people don't. Like my mom, when she put it in, she couldn't tell any difference. I was like, Mom, you're killing me here. This is this is wonderful. It's awesome. But So moms uh, are four, John. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting that, that stickiness you get off throughout the day. The softening uh, takes care of it. If I go to places where, where you're at, Tom, I'm miserable because of the uh, the soap curd that just sticks to me. Uh, it's yes. just, it's very uncomfortable, especially if you're used to one. Right. right. Well, and I yeah. guess that's, oh, that's the, absolutely. Absolutely. The, and the, by the way, with moms, don't feel bad. Cause my mother, I used to say, mom, let me fix that. Oh no. Call someone who knows what they're doing. You don't know how to fix them. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> did, did she know? Okay, you I'll call to... Abex or whatever, you know, right, 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 <laughs> she right. let me touch it. That's funny. That funny. Yeah. The, uh, because I, I guess what the, 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 the big learning curve thing for anybody who gets one of these, John, is that when, when you get that, um, that squeaky clean feeling, what that really is, is not that you're clean, but it's the soap curd on your skin. Uh, it's the same thing. If you cleaning a shower wall, if you don't wipe it down every time and you let it go for a few days, that nothing's on there except, except soap and hardness it forms a curd and it sticks to it so that's what's sticking to your skin and softening systems you don't get that well i have a 500 hundred dollar faucet you know the ones you put your hands underneath and they automatically come on and off mm -hmm. that thing's five years old and spotless i go into homes that's six months old and it's already got buildup on it so you know th these things are really nice to have uh, and going uh -huh. back to the guy that uh, asked about the um uh the RO systems uh, going with carbon filter, man, there's some bad stuff in the water. If you guys or anybody has seen the movie um, Aaron Brockovich or Blackwater, it it'll open your eyes to stuff. And it's uh, and I, I don't like to get in and preach doomsday and and there's terrible things in the water, but uh, it it opened my eyes. Worth well, watching. Well, I'm not ready to do, go total Aaron Brockovich on this, so. That didn't end well for her. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I guess it ended well for Meryl Streep. She got the Oscar, but, you know, but for Aaron, not so much. So, all right. Do you, do you have a, you have a question? We'll be happy to help you out like this. John comes on. He helps us out with our home show pros and all that. We'd love to have you on. And John, we appreciate you being here, being here this morning. And we are going to share here in a second 
um, a video about we did with you uh, a, a little while ago about water softeners, about why you get, we've talked so much about them. We thought it'd be good to see the exact process people go through before they, um, before they, when they get a water softener installed. So we'll share that with you. Before we do go though, I want you, one of the things we haven't talked about, we kind of talked around it, but we haven't really talked about the fact that you represent Kinetico. You're the local Kinetico dealer here in the Houston area. What, what's the advantage or comparative difference of Kinetico versus the other brands? Uh, from a consumer point of view, uh, Kinetico will have two resin tanks the benefit of two resin tanks is one tank's in standby and one tank's online. So you never have any downtime. You could be in the middle of a shower and it needs to go into regeneration. It just jumps to the secondary tank. And uh, single tank systems have to wait till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, that doesn't work for me either because at my age, I'm 66, I'm up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning using the bathroom and different things. I don't have to worry about my water softening system being in regeneration. And the more people that you have, the more it works out also. And the Kinetico is the only one with the non-electrical top on the top of a non-electrical meter. Uh, it just, it just, it's always online. Um, and another benefit of twin tanks is, man, you're putting these things on to clean your house and clean everything, keep it nice and clean. It's what it does. Well, the Kinetico backwashes itself with softened water. No other system will do that. And it just uh, gives it a, li a long, long lifespan. What about uh, the, the, the K5, too? I mean, how does that stack up to other um, water, water uh, RO units? I don't know if you can see this. Uh, how Maybe did I can, know? Maybe. I got to tell you, Tom, I win the pool. I win the office <laughs> pool. John would bring you data. Win the I, I said John would bring data, and he did. Today. Anyway, it's, it's giving about eight or ten uh, different RO systems and what they take out. And, and K5 uh, doubles the capacity of the water that it produces, which basically means how quick it uh, fills up an empty tank or when you take some water out. And then it does address those PFOAs and PFOSs as, as well as um, uh, the lead and copper and cysts and barium. It goes on and on. There's no system like that. And the big part of the reason is it has a permeate flush on the membrane, which means it's bathing the membrane with the same quality of water you're drinking. Uh, the, the K5RO is outstanding when it comes to the technology and the um, engineering they built into it. The, That's uh, awesome. I didn't yeah. even know that, and I own one. <laughs> so, great. I'm serious. So if you want to get the PFOs out of your H2O ASAP. You want to get in touch, FYI, with the people at Aquatex. I couldn't get think of any more off the top of my head there, John. You you have a you seem to have a wellspring of acronyms ready for us this morning. I do. I do. Acronyms, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, John, thanks a lot for being here. I like the prop. I did. Okay. I, I like it. I like it. It's like it's like the news reporters say. You know, it's like you know, I have the documents right here. You know. All right. Well, th well thank, thank you. you guys for inviting me. This has been a blast. Well, um, I Thanks, appreciate John. it. Appreciate and John, it. and what we're going to do right now, John, we're going to talk about water softeners the way that the way you guys do it, which is the right way, and in this home show video. Yes, we had hard water, so we decided that a water softener would be the best bet. Hard water is hard to live with. Our faucets got to where we couldn't turn the faucet handles on and we had to replace those faucets. Hard times call for soft solutions. Water conditioner is a whole house system and it will remove your calcium and your magnesium and your iron and things that cause scaling issues in your pipe and on your fixtures. So how hard is your water? You could wait a few years for problems to surface. Another option, a simple test. The water is about 11 grains hard here. Uh, we will bring that down to zero grains hard. Soft water means longer lasting water heaters, faucets, and fixtures. But the water from the tap still hasn't passed the final exam. It showed all the impurities that were in our drinking water. The dissolved solids is about 225 parts per million. 225 parts per million of chlorine and other impurities. Softeners aren't designed to remove those solids. I just wanted it to be safe for us. 
That comes from installing a reverse osmosis system. The reverse osmosis uses semi-permeable membranes to filter the water at the molecular level. To put it simply, basically turn the water that's coming into your house into bottle quality water. Makes me happy knowing that I'm giving my kids and my dog and <laughs> my husband and I better water. From 225 parts per million down to two, ready for drinking. Safe, soft water. That's what I have at my house thanks to Aquatex, the certified home show pro that took care of the water my family uses. For homeshowradio.com, I'm Tom Tynan. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a great show today. I want you to know that next week, we're gonna start doing this at four in the afternoon on Thursday because we find that we have more people watching then. So it only makes more sense and we want to get to as many people as possible. Of course, on weekends on Sports Radio 610, I'll be answering your questions 9 to noon on Saturday, 8 to 11 on Sunday. And don't forget Danny Milliken, who helped us with the sod webworms today. He's on 7 to 9 before me on Saturday. So next weekend, we'll see you at 4 in the afternoon. Got a question? Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. Home Show. Home Show. Home show. Advice from a pro who knows Home Show